So, whether you want to interconnect graphite or you want to make graphene oxide, you're essentially using the same reaction conditions. That is, you have 80 millilitres of concentrated uh, sulfuric acid, 20 millilitres of um, phosphoric acid at 75%, uh, 18 grams of potassium permanganate and one or two grams of graphite. Uh, you chuck the whole lot in there, give it a mix up, and then you keep it at ambient temperature, around about 25, 30, um, for a few days, and it will oxidise. Um, then you add your hydrogen peroxide. Now, I've been having a number of people um, write to me, telling me that um, this reaction isn't working. And it's no real surprise. Um, these reactions don't always work. We all have failures. Um, and, and me included, I just don't post them, so you get the idea that everything always works. It doesn't. Um, think plenty of things fail all the time. However, the interesting thing about um, those particular reaction conditions is, as I said, they're pretty much identical um, to intercalating the compound. So, um, instead of putting one or two grams of graphite in there and letting the thing oxidise, if you put 50 grams of graphite in there and keep the temperature around about 10 degrees and you leave that for three or four days, instead of oxidising, what it does is intercalates the sulphate into the um, graphite. And um, when you wash it, you will get some oxidation reaction. So at the end of three or four days, you chuck the whole lot in a, in a few litres of water uh, and the water will go brown. And the water's going brown because there is an oxidation reaction that's gone on and, and that water is going to be full of uh, graphene oxide. And most of your graphite, your intercalated graphite, will settle at the bottom. You pour off the brown, wash it again, and collect the intercalated compound, because that's what we're interested in, this particular thing. Now, um, I've made 100 grams of it, and, and this is the stuff when it's actually been dried. So, as I said, I used the basic commerce method, but I um, put in, if you like, too much graphite. So instead of putting in a gram or two, I put in 50 grams, and instead of keeping it at 25, 30 degrees, I kept it at 10 degrees. Um, it doesn't mix then, it forms a separation. You have a, a layer of concentrated acid and then a layer of graphite at the bottom, and you stir it every now and then. At the end of five days, you chuck the whole lot in some water, and what you get after you've washed and dried it is this granular silvery graphite. Now, this um, graphite is intercalated. And it's been dried in the oven at 200 degrees for about an hour to make sure that it's really, really dry. Now, I've used um, this, this graphite from um, RS Graphite that they sent me, this strange silvery stuff. Uh, and it could be the reason why this is actually quite spectacular. So what you do with it, or what I'm going to do with it, is just put in a tiny amount into this Pyrex bowl. Now, there's about a quarter of a teaspoon in there. It's an absolutely minuscule amount. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to microwave it for 20 seconds on full power. So we'll do that. So there's my minuscule amount of graphite, my quarter of a teaspoon in my ramekin. And this is going to get 20 seconds at full power. Now it does get very hot and it does arc. You don't need to worry about the arcing, you don't need to worry about the heat. Pop it in the microwave and press the start button. Now as that gets going, you'll begin to see it off. There you go. Now it's getting pretty hot in there. Oop, that's something that cracked. Okay, so we pick that back out. Now, look at the volume increase on that. Isn't that phenomenal? That quarter of a teaspoon has increased in volume. I don't know how far, to be honest. I'd have to measure it. So what we're getting there is an excellent exfoliated graphite. So that graphite that I began with has exfoliated tremendously and led to this here. Now, this is a strange substance. It actually feels quite spongy when you touch it, and um, it forms a mat really, really easily. So as you press it, you can form a mat. Now, what I'm going to do with that is um, put it in my sonic bath and see if I can get some, um, some graphene out of that, because that expansion ratio is huge. But what I did do with it was I put it in between a couple of bits of card and pressed the card in the vise, and um, that matted graphite formed this foil. 
And that foil is actually fairly robust, as you can see, it's actually quite flexible. If I could put some more pressure on that, I'm pretty sure that I'll get a pretty good product out of it. Now, if I set that up for you, and we put that on the lowest ohm setting, put this about a centimeter apart, if I can. Sorry about this. There you go, it's about two centimeters apart, and you'll see that it's um, 17, 18 ohms resistance. So the resistance on that is phenomenally low. So that's only about 17 or 18 ohms resistance. It's a flexible graphite foil that we've been able to make by microwave expanding our sulfate intercalated graphite here into our exfoliated graphite there. Anyway, fascinating stuff. I really liked it and thought I'd share it with you.